Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here with a one day bunker build from inside my cave. Um, today I'm tackling my tailstock here. Now, within the lathe, uh, there are three main pieces of the lathe. There's the chuck in which you put the work that you're going to be affecting, carving, changing, polishing. There is the cross slide and tool holder that you will use to implement those changes to the thing you've got in the chuck. And then there's the tailstock, which actually performs a couple of different functions. If you're turning something long and you want to maintain its perfect concentricity, you might put a, a, what's called a live center in your tailstock. You pop it in here and this cone here intersects with the work and it's called a live center because it actually spins. It actually, you can see that this part spins on the body. Uh, and I have several different live centers. I've got this one for most everything. I've got this one for super fine work. And I've got this one for big wide holes that are too big for those other two live centers. The other thing you could do with a tailstock is you can drill holes. Now you can use a normal chuck like this which chucks right into the side, or you can use a much bigger one. This is my biggest Jacobs chuck. I think this goes up to three quarters of an inch. And then you could also chuck a keyless chuck into it. Uh, this, is, this is one of my keyless chucks. It's only hand tightness, uh, and it goes to a fairly small diameter. The fact is I've gathered too many chucks and live centers for the storage that I built when I first put this lathe together. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chucks and live centers, and I only have space for six of them over there. So I'm going to make a new storage system for these live centers and these chucks, and I want to make it convenient to the lathe. So this involves me. Sometimes I'll pop out a live center to pop in a chuck, and I'll just rest it right here on top of the tailstock. And I've got this little wooden shelf up here specifically for that. But I must tell you, I haven't liked how that has gone in general. Like each time I do it, um, I kind of lose track of things up here. It's just, suffice to say, this shelf isn't quite good enough. I think that what I need on this shelf is a holder for a single tail, uh, for a single live center or chuck, whatever I'm like currently rotating in usage. So that's one of the modifications. The other one is, where is this storage for all these chucks and live centers going to go? I think, so I had it over here, way over here, about four feet away from the chuck. And frankly, I find that that ruins my flow. So as I sit here and I look, I don't want it right here. I think that's, uh, there's too much going on here already. But over here, over here where I've got this stock that I built already, and I've got a little table up here, I could actually make a thing that, Attaches to this and holds all these guys right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, the only trick is to make sure that the tailstock doesn't run into this holder when I bring it all the way to its outer extent. Something that rarely, if ever, happens, but still you want to make sure nothing you're building for infrastructure is interrupting your ability to use your tool. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get going on making a tailstock tray and then a live center and chuck holder. Let's see here. The real estate that I have is not over here where I need to be able to control these things. No, it's here. That's where I have the real estate to actually do stuff. So I think if I was gonna make a holder, it would be for a live center right there and a simple keyless chuck right there. Eh, just one, just one. I'm not gonna get greedy. I'm just gonna do one. All right, so that is, I think I just use a little double stick tape to get it off. Oh, wow. Holy hell. I am very impressed. Oh. All right, well, sing the praises of carpet tape. All right. Almost come sa, actually bigger than that. Yeah, then it's got some soft edges. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, so the border's gonna be like this. That, that, and then. Hmm. Let's see some 
tools. All right, so uh, I've got here a, uh, a drafting circle template. I actually just did a show and tell video on this. And the size of hole I'm going for, wow, it's pretty much exactly that. The smallest hole it is, which is a one and a quarter inch hole. So if I want this thing to have clearance from the edge, I think I do it like, right like that. And I line up my circle template. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty good. And make that hole right there, 1.25 inches wider. Actually, I want to go wide on this one. Yeah, I want to go fatter than the fattest. Fatter than the fattest? Maybe not that fat, but yeah, how about that? Yep. All right, so now I line that up. Yes. Okay, cool. So I can make a couple of these cuts on the table saw. This is the border, right? This is the border. Okay. Right. Cool. Cool? All right, now I'm gonna cut this out on my bandsaw. However, I recently ran out of bandsaw blades. So I've got this uh, 3 eighths of an inch uh, uh, metal cutting blade in there, which is no good for regular wood. I wanna be able to use it for aluminum, so I'm actually gonna take it out and swap it out for a nice wood one that I just bought. So here we go. So there you have it. There is my border cut out of half inch uh, 11 ply uh, Arctic birch ply with a small separation right here. But I'm going to use this to actually trace the base of this plate, which will go inside here and be only a quarter of inch thick. So it'll give you the same edge I had on the other one, except it's got this round part that looks cool. So I'm actually going to sink it up here to the corner to save myself some cutting work. Then I'm going to hold it down. Oh, that moved just a tiny bit. It's time to make sure these parts fit together as closely as I'd like them to. And they do. Oh, that's great. All right. Uh, I'm going to cover this in black felt because everything should be covered in black felt. It just looks better that way. Now, it's time for me to drill the hole, which is, again, an inch. Hole. I'm using a Forstner bit for this hole. It'll make a nice clean hole. They can tend to split wood if they come out the other end, so it's always good to back a Forstner bit hole. Ah, come on. There we go. It's always good to back a Forstner bit hole with a bit of extra wood. So. Nice. Perfectly on center. And there we go. Ooh. All right, here we go. Now, oh. I'm going to use my favorite new pin nailer my 22 gauge pin nailer for this. Puts out exceedingly tiny little, little nails. 
Uh, and we're going to, uh, yeah, put a little wood glue in this equation so that what we make is permanent. Nice. After having built things out of wood for many years and seeing how some of them deteriorate, I have started to assiduously use glue and mechanical fasteners every single time I am gluing two pieces of wood together. And I'm here to tell you, life is much better that way. I think, yeah, I'm just gonna do this business, right? Yeah. And we want this corner is the most important corner to get right. So I'm gonna do this piece first. Oh. Yep. Great. And then I'm gonna do this second piece, which is the second most important part. Good. Then as we go in and button it down, oop, as we go in and button it down, Ladies and gentlemen, no blow throughs on the front. There are some on the back, but I can take care of those fairly handily. Now we're ready to stick this guy down. And I have made the classic mistake. I've cut it upside down and backwards. That is a boring problem. How could I, how else could I do this? Oh, I can simply cut that there and then I get all yeah. Now the question is, is it bilateral or symmetrical? And the answer is, I don't know. Since that is the that and that, and this goes like this and this, it looks like, yes. Oh yeah. Talk about felt hiding some crimes. Pulling the backing off of double stick tape or felt, it is still something that causes me a lot of issues here in the shop. Like when I use VHB, very high bond tape, it's really difficult to get the backing off that stuff. Is there a secret that I don't know about? Ah, there we go. Whew. Okay. Okay, good. And then this guy. See, I mostly use an X-Acto blade to reach down and kind of try and tease apart the layers. The problem is, is, if you grab the felt at the wrong spot, it delaminates itself. And then you've got all these peeling corners that are boring. There we go. However, this all seems to be going fairly swimmingly. Yeah, good enough. So now we'll use my X-Acto blade to trim out the circle. Using the edge of the hole as my cutting template with a sawing motion, the X-Acto blade gives me a fairly, uh, right, that's going to live right about there. Yep, that's great. Nice. We put in a, hey, that's kind of nifty. I dig it. All right, I noticed one little problem with it right away which is that um, it's getting caught as I'm trying to pull it back out. And that's because there's this little, there's a little lip right here and that lip's getting caught on the thickness of the plywood. So I'm gonna cut an extra, I'm gonna cut an extra little uh, circle that goes underneath here and I'll staple and glue that in and that'll be just fine. Okay, there's my double stick tape. There's the little extender I put here with the most egregious uh, neck that I have on here, I am going to try with this new arrangement. And lo, that's great. Okay, so we're going to tape that in using this Roscoe double stick carpet tape, which is some of the most tenacious crap I have ever used. Tears with your fingers. Oh, glorious. And then we're going to get this guy parked on there. Now, I could have the keyless chuck in there and my live center there. 
and life is good. I've successfully made my small uh, Morris Taper 4 chuck holder for interim chucks for working, but it's also given me some insight into the ideal holder for an MT4 uh, stock, which is an inch and a quarter Forstner bit with a final pass with a spindle sander, a long spindle sp sander on the drill press. So I've got um, one, two, four, six, eight, ten of these guys. And I'm gonna make a holder that holds 10 of these and it's gonna live right over there. Okay, so if I do this in from each end and this from this, yeah, all right, I like that plan. Well, let's measure it and split the difference. It's 9.9 inches. <clears throat> 9.92. I know this is easy math. 9.92 divided by 2 equals 4.96. Yep. Okay, great. So that gives me roughly, yeah, 3.1 center to center. Cool. So then I can make another one. Here, here, and here. Now I'm storing 12 of these things. Great. All right, so let's see. Make our marks. I like three stacks of four rather than uh, two stacks of six. It's better space allocation. Now for the Forstner bit, so I'm going to actually glue two pieces of wood together here to create that lip that I want. I'm going to actually, yeah, so I'm going to go in here and actually draw roughly my Forstner holes. Yeah, there is my 12 holes. Can you see that? There are my, this is terrible. Uh, all right, now I have my 12 holes. I'm going to glue this to a second board. And then I'm gonna cut out all the, I'm gonna drill these 12 holes. Wonderful. Oh, I love Forster Ben. Uh, now I'm going to clean these up on a spindle sander just so that they're uh, nice. But that's 12 Morris Taper 4 chucks that this will now hold. All right, let's get this force bit out. Oh, it's hot. All right, while I was building this, while I was putting this piece together, this is the business end of my chuck holder, um, I realized, I was thinking about mounting it to this thing and or screwing it to this, and I realized, that, you know what? I want it to be more useful than that to me. Like, I might have another lathe at some point. This might go in a different spot in my shop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give it a pair of standoffs to the backboard and a little thing that goes over the top and hooks on. 
yeah, I'm gonna make this thing hook to the top of this bad boy. We'll see if I can actually make that work. All right. <clears throat> These are the videos in which I cut my head off. That's what happens. When I'm shooting my own videos, you never see my head. <laughs> I've actually cut this at this angle on both sides. I didn't even log what angle it was. I just used my uh, angle finder. Uh, and now it's time to cut the wood from this cardboard template. Um, I've also trimmed the height of this down to be more efficient. So the question now is, it goes to about there. I am, uh, I am not putting these two pieces together to cut them, but I do need them to be exactly the same size. So I'm making a measurement now so I can cut it to that size. And then, actually I won't be able to template these two things together. That would be really nice. Okay, so let's see. I've got my two sides, which are cut out according to the cardboard template that I used. I've got the business end of my cut down chuck holder, and now I am going to glue and tack these guys together. I'm going to use something a little more powerful than the 22 gauge pen for this. We're gonna go with a narrow crown stapler for this operation. It'll just be a lot more positive. And then we have one more part to cut out after we assemble this, and that is the top that attaches to this bad boy. None of them are blowing through. Excellent. I have been looking forward to this solution for a while. I've been trying to think of the best way to arrange my chucks and mostly I've just been watching the patterns of when I get annoyed <laughs> that I have to kind of reach across my own work to get to the stuff that I need to get to. Nice and flush. That is also nice and flush. What you'll notice is that each time I use one of these, drive one of these staples in, I'm making sure that no part of my body is in line with the staple because I have had them travel immense distances. All right, we are also Going to give it, there we go. Yeah, that's a nice positive grab from two different angles. Good, good, good. All right, well, she blows, there is our holder. Now I have to put it in place and cut and measure the piece that goes over and grabs from the backside. That's the next step. All right, here we go. Here is my new chuck holder, holds 12 chucks. It's got a uh, keeper on the back and it is able to, look at that. Yeah, nice and solid. I have managed to get it in the way of my uh, lathe collar chucks, but that's okay. I can just live right there. All right, let's load it up. Yeah. Oh, that is a different one. That's a Morris. there. Put the, these guys up here. Oh, right. So that guy, yeah, 
let's do that. Let's do this. So the big one's here. And then this big bullnose lives down there. Yeah. All right. Two, four, six, seven. Oh, there's another one. Eight. That's it. That's one of the live centers. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And that live center has to live there. Am I missing one? What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing one. I thought I counted 10 earlier, but I may have counted nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. That would seem to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, I, for one, am very pleased. That, there we go. Let me uh, do a proper exit here. Well, that's it. Laura Kampf, how do you shoot these videos by yourself? It is a lot of work. That is my one day bunker build. Uh, and I believe that's the first one day build I've shot completely by myself. Um, here's hoping it cuts together. I am uh, very pleased with the position of my new chucks, switching between a live center and a normal Jacobs keyless. Super trivial. That is awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. <laughs> Manage your shop accidents well. Make sure you have enough first aid supplies on hand, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.